Well, hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you to uh, another episode of this uh, exciting and fascinating video series with Brother Mill, which we have entitled Holes in the Narrative, Why the Islamic or Why the Standard Islamic Narrative is Sketchy. Last time, we talked about the fact that the story of Muhammad and his biography is sketchy. Today, we're going to talk about another sketchy allegation that Muhammad banned images in his lifetime. With that, of course, we want to turn our attention to Brother Mill. Brother Mill, thank you so much for joining us. And as always, uh, it's a privilege really to uh, work uh, together with you. So what's the story here about the banning of arts at the time of Muhammad? Well, first of all, it's great to be back and thank you so much for inviting me on. Um, What's interesting when we look at the history of images of Muhammad is that Muslims themselves don't seem to have got the memo. If Muhammad banned images in his time, it doesn't seem to be a memo that most Muslims got. And right up to very recently, they seem to be very comfortable indeed with images of Muhammad. Right. And they only seem to be really upset is when people make mocking images of Muhammad, which is understandable. Um, no one likes a, a religious figure mocked, and I definitely would not encourage anyone to mock Absolutely. a religious figure. But um, but the history is very different, and it really suggests that there's something going on um, that's sketchy. And uh, so, first of all, let's do a thought experiment, if we may. Suppose Muhammad of the seventh century did ban the depiction of human beings in art to avoid idolatry. Wouldn't we see this in the culture of the eighth century? If we take um, an example of a Hadith, Sahih Muslim, Ibn Umar reported Allah's messenger having said, those who paint pictures would be punished on the day of resurrection and it would be said to them, breathe soul into what you have created. This teaching is so clear and would be known by Muslims that no leader could openly flout such a taboo. Would would we all agree with that, that if such a teaching was in place, it would be a brave Muslim leader to to go against what Muhammad has taught, surely, in the 8th century? Right. So let's have a look. You know, is there any evidence to suggest that this First of all, was a teaching back then and was being put into practice. Well, if we look at the example of the Kuzre Amra in Jordan from the 730s, it's the best preserved early Islamic, uh, sorry, has the best preserved early, early Islamic paintings uh, from the palaces of the Umayyad caliphs and princes. These mostly date to the first half of the 8th century. This is what it looks like from the outside. The bathhouse of, of this building was built for the Prince Al-Walid ibn Yazid. It has an audience hall and a suite of three bathrooms. Now, what's interesting, if you think about an audience hall, it's a hall where people come to visit and see and you know witness what's there. It's not something private, something that you'd have in a secret private room. It's something that they're comfortable with showing to an audience, okay? Um, and, and what I'm going to show you um, is very shocking. It, it's not just the fact that these are images of human beings on the wall of a caliph's palace, but these are very raunchy. So if you are um, if you're um, offended by that, it's probably not, best not to watch. But you know these are um, quite scandalous images. It would appear the caliphs never got Muhammad's memo. Um, as described by Dr. Uh, Beatrice Leal, in the middle of one wall, wall of the audience hall, a semi-naked woman stands at the edge of a bath. She is watched by a group of men on the balcony, some of whom point at her, and one dressed in a bright blue robe on the far left leans forward over the railing to get a better view. So uh, now some people have pointed out this uh, naked woman looks more like a man. Um, I'll leave that to to you to decide which you think it is. Is it a man or is it a woman? But in any case, what we see in the early part of the 8th century, so we're talking the 730s, is images of human beings on the wall of the caliph, which completely defies what Muhammad supposedly taught only a few decades before. 
That's right. Now, if we take another look here, we even see Al Walid himself painted on, on one of the walls in large, large scale. We also see this one. So here is the topless woman. And this is supposedly 100 years after Islam was supposed to have begun. How could this be possible if the standard Islamic narrative is true, that Muhammad existed, he taught all of these teachings contained in the Hadiths, particularly the idea that you shouldn't paint an image of a human being, and yet they're painting this in the wall of the caliphs, sorry, in the, in the, on the wall of the, the caliphs' palaces. Here's another example. And here is another one. And this one is, contains uh, the image of a couple who are basically drawing themselves off after being in a bath together. So this is all very uh, provocative and uh, um, not what you expect of um, the Caliph's palace, really. Um, and we also have statues. And this is a statue of, of a woman. Um, and she's uh, basically semi-naked. Um, as it's described there, the proportions of this female figure are curvaceous and voluptuous. Okay. So this does not fit in very well with the idea that um, statues and images of people were banned under Muhammad. That's right. And then we have the Kaiser al Hair al-Garbi. Um, apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Al -Garbi. Um, al -Hair al -Garbi. It was built... It was built for the Caliph Hisham, and among its decorations are two huge frescoes on floors. One of the panels shows vine scrolls, centaurs, and a woman carrying fruits in a cloth. She is probably the classical figure Gay or Gaia, which is a goddess, a, a personification of the earth. I was really surprised to find that they would have the image of a goddess um, in a Caliph's palace in the early 8th century, considering Islam was supposed to have begun and it's a monotheistic uh, religion. So here it is. Okay, so it's dated to 727. Okay, and here is another example. Here we have um, musicians and a hunter on horseback and is more Sasanian in a style and content. For example, the hunter's flowing scarf headdress was adopted from elite Sasanian fashion, which would indicate perhaps that perhaps the rulers at that time were either um, strongly influenced by the Sasanians or perhaps they were Sasanians or Persians, let's say, themselves. So that would certainly undercut the Islamic narrative. But as you can see, no problem with music, no problem with depicting people in art. And if there were a universal prohibition against making images of people, how would this impress devout visitors? Palaces like these were usually outside cities, but they were often near main roads, and so were relatively easy for their patrons to visit. They would have been used as temporary retreats, holiday homes, and probably also as sites of display, places for the humane aristocrats to entertain and impress vis visitors. So I ask you, if you think about it, if this was designed to impress the visitors, does that make sense to you if Muhammad has banned images of people? I think that does not make sense. There's something amiss in the standard Islamic narrative, something sketchy. That's right. Here are some statues in this palace. No problem depicting people um, seem, seem to be quite uh, curvaceous. Um, there's even um, an image that appears to be a standing caliph, which might remind you of one of the coins of Abdul al-Malik. He's depicted holding a sword. So that's a bit of a smoking gun right there. They have no problem depicting people, uh, no problem um, having statues. So, you know, we hear the Salafis talking about how um, having statues are idols. You know, they spent a lot of time in Iraq in Syria, you know, quite recently destroying these statues. But yes, we have these way back in the 8th century. Is this why they're destroying them? Because this evidence is highly embarrassing. 
I don't know if you want to react to that. No, I mean, it's it's uh, obvious. I mean, I like the fact that you're pointing to uh, uh, this uh, important, uh, uh, basically, piece of information. If Muhammad indeed did ban images, then you would expect at least the first century or two, right after Muhammad's time, to adhere to that. And you can say later people began to stray away. But we're finding that this is the opposite. Immediately after Muhammad's time, actually, this uh, act is flourishing to the point of making statues and pieces of art at palaces of caliphs and others. And then it's a later, uh, basically, attack against it by a specific group, the Salafis, obviously. And uh, uh, they made this claim that it's prohibited and it was banned. So are they saying these caliphs were what? You know, uh, uh, infidels? They they were not true Muslims? Or what is it that they're going to say now about these things? Yeah, and these are the caliphs that are supposedly spreading Islam around the Middle East. How That's is right. that possible? You know, there's a contradiction. Like a lot of these images and statues would not be out of place in Roman Pompeii in the first century AD. Right. It's, you know, like I, I think... Um, you wouldn't find this in a Christian place, but you would certainly find it in a pagan uh, building in the first century of the Romans or something like that. And so this is quite a contradiction. Absolutely. And of course, um, even coins uh, do uh, paint a similar image where you find statues uh, or images of characters in there as well. Yeah. So it didn't end with you made. So um the, it continued right through into the Abbasid period, and this is just one example. This is a an image of a, a creature. You can read that for yourselves. But the, they have um, found um, artifacts with a pair of dancing women pouring wine into bowls. Another thing that was supposed to have to have been banned in the seventh century, Muhammad is supposed to have banned wine, and yet we find images of wine appearing in the ninth century still on artifacts. So. There this goes is the really embarrassing. Of <laughs> yeah. Um, so, did Muhammad really ban images in his time? My verdict is that it sounds sketchy. I don't believe it. It is true. It looks more like that the hadiths came after the fact and were redacted and made to look like they came from that time. It That's doesn't add up to me. And we're seeing evidence of this already. You know, things happen after the fact, not before, but after. And it was kind of like uh, redacted, like you said, bringing it back to the way it should have been at the time when the events took place. So it doesn't work this way. You see it with the hadith, you see it with the biography, and now we are beginning to see it even in many other elements. So folks, as you can see, this is why we told you this show is going to be exciting and at the same time, bold. We apologize, of course, to, to you in advance about some of these images, but we wanted to show you from the Islamic architectural and Islamic archaeological sites what is there. You can go and investigate it yourself. I mean, uh, my brother here, Mel, brought up things uh, about a actual locations that you can go yourself and see for yourself what's there. We're not really inventing anything. These days, you can even Google things. You can even probably Google Earth and go and watch it uh, from a satellite image. You know, whatever the case might be, we're only reporting. We're just the messengers. Don't kill the messengers, of course. Uh, you know, we are just sharing with you what we're finding. And we're asking logical questions. If Muhammad banned images, then I can tell you, if that was the case, then these caliphs failed and failed miserably to adhere to what Muhammad basically was commanding. In fact, I would argue and say they violated Muhammad's command. They showed complete disregard to his teaching. And these are the leaders of the ummah, by the way. So imagine now... Uh, how things started it for Islam, not on a good uh, right foot. You know, it started it really in the wrong direction, if that was the case. Unless that hadith was invented later because someone's feelings were hurt. Maybe someone began to realize, oops, if we're teaching piety, we cannot be acting this way. So we have to find a such justification for it. And that's when you start seeing these hadith being collected. No wonder Bukhari discounted you know, the majority of the hadith he collected, and he collected north of 600,000, and he only have 7,000. And he says the rest of them were fabrications. Wink, wink. So that's what I leave you with. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And until we meet again next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. 
Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.